During this video, we're going to talk about aperture. Understanding aperture will help you better control the light and the creativity that you can get in your photos because aperture is one of the key ingredients to helping you get that great blurred effect in the background that a lot of photographers love. So let's start by looking at aperture and how it fits in to the exposure triangle. So the exposure triangle, as you can see, is made up of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. So today we're going to talk exclusively about aperture and define what it is and give you some examples of what it does for you and your photographs. So let's start by pulling up this grid or this diagram and showing you all the different aspects of aperture. So it starts by understanding what's called f-stops. And you can see on this diagram, f-stops go from f22 and on this diagram down to f1.4. A simple way to think about it is that f22 is a very narrow aperture and f1.4 is a very wide aperture. And so now for this video, we're going to really take a look at aperture and define what it is and what it does for your photographs. And so a really important thing to understand about aperture is that it's actually driven by your lens. This is a, an old 50 millimeter lens. It's not driven by your camera. And so every lens is different and every lens has a different aperture range or ability of what it can do for aperture. And so this old lens, taking a look at it, and I'll zoom in here close, goes from f2 to f22. And so I'm going to show you as it opens up, here's f2, and you can go to f2.8, and then f4, f6, and I'll click through them all. I won't talk to you as I go through each one. But you can see what aperture does is it's the the little thing in there that closes down how much light is let into the photograph. And so you can see it opens and it closes based on the different apertures. And so that's the first thing I want you to understand about aperture as you look back at this diagram is that depending on what f-stop you're at, at f22, a very narrow aperture lets in a very low amount of light. Looking at f1.4, which is considered a very wide aperture, that lets in a lot of light. And so I know that these numbers, the f-stops, the, the numbers, the light, it's somewhat technical in nature. And this is probably one of the most technical things that you'll learn as you begin your understanding of photography. But once you understand aperture, it really does open up so much creativity and control of what you can do for your photograph. So even though it may be technical, it may be a little bit overwhelming, please continue to focus on aperture because once you get it, you really will get it. So the reason I wanted to talk about light is that that's the most important thing to understand about aperture is how much light it lets in. So again, f22, very narrow aperture lets in a little bit of light. f1.4 on the far end of the spectrum, which this lens cannot even go to f1.4, it can only go to f2. Uh, let's in a lot of light. Now to show you an example, a real life example of how this aperture controls the amount of light in your photograph, I'm going to use this flashlight and this old lens to show you two different f-stops and how much light is going through the lens based on the different f-stops. So let's start with that really narrow f-stop, which is f22. And you can see it's got a real small pinhole. It's actually letting the light through. So I'm actually going to step out of the lights and come into the shadows and show you with this flashlight how much light is going through this small opening at f22. Alright, so there you can see just a very small amount of light is coming through the lens based on this f22 setting. So now I'm going to step back and I'm going to switch it from f22 to f2 which you can see it really opened up wide, which is the wide aperture. So now I'm going to step back into the shadows, turn the flashlight back on, and now you can see how much more light is coming through at f2 compared to f22 based on what this lens is able to do. Now again, every lens is different. Some lenses can go 
and a 50 millimeter like this can go down to F2 or maybe even F1.4 like that diagram was showing all the way up to F22. Other lenses may only be able to go as low as F5.6 or F4. Every lens is different and a lot of times that's what drives the cost of a lens up is the lower that the f-stop can go or the wider that the lens can get. So that's an example, a real life example of letting light through with aperture and hopefully you saw more light goes through at a very wide aperture, a low f-stop number and a lot less light goes through at a high f-stop number which is a very narrow aperture. So now that we understand how much light is going through the lens, let's talk about the effect that the aperture has on the photographs. And this is with the depth of field. And so depth of field really is just a fancy way to say how much of your scene is in focus. So if you think about the depth in a scene, whether take a picture of me and there's a lot of, let's say trees and depth in the background, the aperture will control if I'm in focus, how much behind me, the depth of field is also in focus. So going back to our diagram, if we're at F22, we're letting in a little bit of light, just a small amount of light, but the depth of field is greater. There's a lot more in focus at F22. So if you take a shot of me, there's gonna be a lot of things in focus. You're gonna be able to see me and also the trees in focus behind me because F22 has a great amount of depth of field. A lot of things are in focus. On the other end of the spectrum, at F1.4, it's a very small depth of field, so there's not a lot in focus. This is how you get that blurred effect. There's more blur in the background. So with that same example, if I'm here and there's trees in the background, I would be in focus at F1.4, but the trees in the background would be completely blurred out because there's just no depth of field, very small depth of field at f1.4. So here's a couple of examples to bring this to life. So here's a shot that was done at Epcot. This is China at night. I shot this at f14. And so I shot at f14 because I wanted everything in the scene to be in focus. I wanted a lot of depth of field. So you can see the archway in the front is in focus. The building in the background is in focus. I wanted everything in focus focus and sharp, so I shot it at F14, and you can see everything is in focus, a great amount of depth of field. On the other end of the spectrum, here's a portrait I took of Jesse, my beautiful bride, and this was shot at F2.8. So a small amount of depth of field, which allowed her to be in focus, but the background behind her is completely blurred. So that's what aperture does, is not only does it let in different amounts of light, which we showed you in that example, but it also controls how much of your scene is in focus or blurred based on the aperture. So that's what you wanna learn about apertures. Number one, understanding what the different f-stops are and how it affects the lens, because again, the lens is what controls the aperture, and then it controls the light and also the depth of field. So once you start to understand aperture, and I recognize there's a lot of technical descriptions in this, but once you start to understand it, it will open up creativity for you to be able to blur the background or create a lot of depth of field when you want everything in focus. And also it'll give you the best understanding of how to control light, which is the most important element in photography uh, for your photographs. And so now that you've watched this video on kind of the technical explanations and examples of aperture, I encourage you to watch the next video, which is where we'll show you how to use it on your camera to go into what's called aperture priority mode and start to try different things. And we'll give you some examples of the effect that it has in changing the different apertures and really put this into practice and go from the science of aperture, which this video was, to actually applying it and showing you what it can do and how you can use aperture priority to start practicing and learning aperture. So I encourage you to watch that video and thanks for watching this video on photographytv.com.